Who are your brothers and who are your sisters? Who is your family? Who is your mother? This is a matriarchal society. We have a mother and we have our children and we are all related to each other. Others are all others. We are one. But I have seen even in discussions people have told me that Sahaja Yogis will take the side of the new Sahaja Yogis and fight. You all should support each other instead of you are taking the side of somebody, third person coming in. Suddenly you get attached to that person, why? So this is one of the special characteristics which we have got, we should try to understand. If you cannot go, don't go. But if you go, then you have to behave yourself. If you cannot afford, you should not do it. But if you can afford it and if you have to go there, then go. But don't behave like beggars. That when we come back here, what shocked me that for these 108 rupees I had to talk to people. I mean, really it shocked me completely. Now I could pay that back, 108 rupees, not much, to all of you. But it was so, and the discussion was about this. All right. So one should not discuss this. For your information, you know, your mother has spent a lot of money. But I've never said that. I've, no one knows how much I've spent. If any, if you ask Gavin, he won't be able to say. Nobody. They know a little bit here and a little bit there, and Warren knows a little bit there, and somebody knows here. <laughs> but not to be said. When you spend something, you are not to tell. No, it has to be done quietly, sweetly, beautifully. But here it's a little thing like that, and to talk like that, I mean, I was really, you are saints, you know, you are saints, you are great people, you are evolved people, you are religious leaders of tomorrow. What are you saying? What are you talking? Just think of that, what is your position? So saving labor, saving money, and last of all, that we try to save everything for ourselves, selfishness. Tremendous selfishness, and we don't see it sometimes. So please try to understand that all this material selfishness must end up into spiritual selfishness. If you are really selfish, then know the Self, which is the source of everything. If you are really sensibly selfish, are you? Then know that Self, which gives you everything. And now you have opened the way, you have come inside, now you are there, you are sitting here. What more do you want, I don't understand. So there are some good people, I am not saying there are not, there are many good people. But those who are not bring forth all these things and they create and generate a situation. In such a thing, supposing in a discussion somebody starts, you should just say, shut up, we are saints, we are not to talk these things. Say if you meet some saints together, they are sitting down, will they discuss these things? Will they discuss these things? Will they talk about these things? Think of it. You are saints. First of all, know that you are saints. Now you are all saints. Now what should you discuss? how we spread such yoga, how to talk about God, how to work it out, how to release our energies for God's work. This should be our main concern, isn't it? Went to see Gagangad Maharaj, <coughs> first of all. So you said, I want to talk to you only. I said, you didn't want to talk to such yogi. So he asked me, so you came on the earth, Right. But do you find us all right? Are we uh, capable enough to receive you? I mean, see the questions he asked me. And then he says that, 
what should we do on this earth to make you comfortable? What is needed to be done? Because all, all the way you have taken your incarnation. He talked to me like this. I was amazed. Then he told his disciples, now this is the goddess sitting before you. What are you doing? Do her puja. You do my puja. What's the use of doing my puja? Do her puja. Every bit of it. I was amazed at his reaction. That's what we have to understand. That we are today... What's it? Huh? No, I, I, I didn't want the uh, lamp to start smoking if the oil broke oil? out. They are all burning all right. No, no, it's burning all right. It will go on burning. It's probably running out. Huh? It's running out. Run out. Run out. But still they are burning. Do you know how long it has been burning without oil? (laughs) (laughs) I I have seen it long time back. So, now we come to a point where we understand ourselves from the ridiculous to the sublime point, that we should not oscillate anymore. Let us fix our sublime thoughts one after another, how we climb a mountain, fix one, then another sublime thought. Let some sublime thought come into your mind. Oh, that's such a beautiful thought. All right, fix that. Climb up. Then another sublime thought. You are a source of that. Now, another sublime thought. Ah, that's great. Hold on to that. Like that you climb. Through sublimity, sublime. Not degrading thoughts, but immediately if there is some degrading argument or suggestion or some sort of a a big big argument will start, everybody sitting there. It's even worse than what I find about these BBC people now discussing on the table sometimes, can be very bad. So one has to understand that we, our priorities are going to be very different from all others. For them ridiculous is important, for us sublime is important. If anybody suggests anything like that, it should say, no, that's not sublime. No, we can't have it. We can't talk about it. Just stop it. Let us see ourselves fully competing in achieving sublime within us. You have assets, as I told you, that you are born in this country of Sadashiva. You are the heart of the universe that you are special people to be born here. You had people like William Blake before you. See the vibrations. Did he care for anything? Did he talk of anything ridiculous? Did he talk of anything nonsensical? Did he grudge about money? Did he say anything about it? How he stood up and how he said and what he propounded He wants to create Jerusalem. Do we think like that? We have to create Jerusalem. Then how do we think all these ridiculous things, talking, gossiping and saying things and not working out through meditation our ascent? I do not know how many more Sajogis we are going to get because maybe that after this might get only donkeys. Maybe. I can't say. Let us hope we get better people. Let us hope. Whatever you are, you are going to determine the image of the people who are going to come. That's why I wanted to talk today especially for this purpose, that we have to learn that so much is still to be done, the mother is going away. If I go now, I'll come back, of course, for a short time. But at the most two years more. And then what? We have to work hard to come up. These two years we have to all work very hard. 
especially in the ashrams. I have told you about chastity, that's the first part of it. And there should be absolutely brothers and sisters relationship among yourselves. Like a brother and sister never go and try to please each other, do they? I mean this thing called flirt, what you call flirting, that do they do? And that should go on in the ashram. And th- it's very wrong. I think it's very, very wrong to do that. This is an ashram of sages, sages who have taken their birth after ages. So sages must be worshipped like sages. You cannot dress up like a punk and become a sage. You cannot be like other people. A sage has a face, has an expression, has eyes. His whole gait is different from others. He has confidence as well as compassion. We have to see those images in him. Now so far it's all right that we came to Sahaja Yoga for our gain. We are here now for the gain of others. We have gained whatever is possible. We don't want to gain any more. Now let us give this to others. For that we have to have an image. We have to dress up in that way. For example, I was the other day telling the... I don't think it may be too much for you people to believe that, but it's a fact that it's the brain that is upset here. Heart is, of course, is frozen, but brain is responsible. And I told them that every Saturday you must rub your head with so much of oil, nicely, every Saturday. Sunday wash it off. But on the whole, the system that existed before this, about twenty years back, all the Englishmen used to have very nice combed hair, I mean, they never had fluffy hair or anything. But I think since this hairdressing started, people took to this kind of a thing, and it's very disabled and funny. For a saint he should be properly dressed. There should be neatness about it. Untidiness is not a sign of a saint. You come and see my house, it's very big. I cannot live with untidiness. If it's temporarily or somewhere, it's all right, but if you have to live somewhere, you should be neat and tidy. But it's not so. I've seen people grudging, supposing you go to Brighton, Brighton people say they came here and went away without even putting the beds right. When they come, the same Brighton people, when they come here to London, the London people tell me (laughs) that they came here, spoilt everything, did not put anything right and went home. So the attitude of spoiling others' things and not your own is wrong. You have to change that. On the whole, one has to understand the appearance, the living system is to be systematized, is to be systematized, so that you do not waste your energy in establishing that system which is not so important. And the unsystematic, which is the energy, then works out better if you are systematized. So a kind of a neatness, a kind of a system in your life should be there. I mean, I know of Gandhiji, he used to go out for a walk, and people could put their watches right by the time he used to walk, the way he used to come and go around. Of course, you need not be slave of the watches, of course, that's not the point I'm saying. Again, I have to say the other thing, because you can go to another area. Is that, as in the whole, the Western mind is very self-opinated, it's very self-opinated. They don't want to learn anything from anyone, they think they are the best. Like they will go to somebody's house, oh, I don't like it, this is not good. Or even an artist, say, and person who is well-educated in art, 
they have not seen the other world. So them, anything is a big sort of a uh, funny thing. As I told you the other day, when I went to Brighton, these people, I talked to Brighton, that in Brighton you have got such a beautiful piece of art, where Rajput art and Mughal art is combined together in that royal pavilion outside. Inside they say, I have not seen inside. But the description of that when I saw in the tourist book was that it is bizarre, it's absurd. Any one of them can make even one arch like that, then I can understand. But you see, you criticize. Why? Because you can't do it yourself. Because you can't do it, then it is bizarre, then it is bad. And this is much more in an English character than anywhere else. They make everybody look very low compared to them, always. Like some Sajoginis from abroad, I wanted them to come to England to be married. They said, not in England, no. we can't live there, because they all look down upon them. Italians are frightened of you. If you are Argentinians, they are frightened of you. Spanish are frightened of you. French, they say, we are just the same as they are, you see. Can't <laughs> Austrians don't want to come. Because though you may not have vibrations, though you may not be very good at realization, you may not be anything, but you just put on a hat and you become, I say, a bit bot. <laughs> You look down upon everyone, showing them down. The best way to exist in this world. Have nothing, just try to show down a person, you are no good. It's very surprising in Sahaja Yoga people say that about English people, that they don't want to come to England because everyone looks down upon. You have developed a method of looking down upon. But what do you do? What do you have? Let's stay come to the brass tacks, as they say in America. Let's see. Can you sing as good as that? As that fellow who played the other day. Can you do it? Any one of you in your generations. Can you build Taj Mahal? Leave alone Ajanta. Can you make these rugs, which, Italy, uh, which, which Persians can make? What have you shown of your merit that you are boasting of? You cannot make the embroidery, the women here cannot. You cannot cook like us, can you? You cannot even make embroidery like the Spanish. You cannot make furniture like the Italians, can you? What can you do? What is the art you have produced? Constable? Turner? All right, I respect them as artists. Are they the topmost? Are they? Derek, you tell me. You don't think so? All right. Nice you have given me that. So now what have we achieved so much that we think no end of ourselves? Put a question to yourself, first of all. <coughs> that we look down upon everyone like that and think everybody is a stupid fool and you are the only cleverest person. And even in Sahaja Yoga you do the same thing sometimes. It's not only ego, it's the stupidity which tries to show off. So this is the worst thing that has happened to us, to our character, I tell you. We have no humility of any kind. Anybody who does not know the job will always behave like that. We don't know Sajo, we don't know how to give realization, we cannot 
understand anything what's happening to another person, but we are great Sahaja Yogis going around. I say with bought again. That's the way. It's a serious matter. We have no business to look down upon anybody else but ourselves. What have we achieved? In Sahaja Yoga, I must admit, with all due respect to all of you, all the people, of all the people, Australians are the best. I must say, I'm sorry to say, but it is so. Practically every Australian is much more sensitive, you can say. They were the criminals, sent as criminals, they are the children of the criminals, or whatever you may call them. <coughs> Then the second are Austrians. French are the last, I agree. But there's a competition between English and French. Who is the last? They also look down upon everyone, the French. So now for you, I know we are very fond of horse racing, so I am putting you onto a race. You have to come up, all of you can, because you have the greatest asset which no one has, that you are born in England, where people like William Blake was born. It was Bhairava himself who took birth. He could not take birth anywhere else, but here he took birth. Who described this house, who described my house, who has said everything about Sahaja Yoga. And he said that men of God will become prophets and they will have powers to make other prophets. Have we become prophets now? The powers are not there, you can prophesize. Powers are not there because you are lost in all these frivolous, stupid, nonsensical things. Mantras are not working, your prophetic powers are not there, your Kundalini powers are not there. Powers are not working, a weak, weak instrument. Make it all right. Systematize. You have the greatest advantage. I tell you, you have the greatest advantage. And that's why I call this meeting now. I have been to this ashram so many times, I have never been to any such ashram. I have lived here the most of my time, nowhere, nowhere in the world I have lived like this. Australia, I have been there only thrice, I think. And now things should not be taken for granted. Of course, spreading of Sahaja Yoga is important, but ascent is also very important. Let us now take a tapasya, a vow of tapasya. Let us do it as a tapasya, as a penance, all of you, whether you are in the ashram or in the house. Those who are in the house are also lost. They don't drink, but they sleep. What's the use? So now let us all take it up as a tapasya. And don't indulge into internal nonsensical politics. There are others who are doing it for you, don't you worry. You just develop yourself well. And when I am out of India, dedicate yourself. When I am away from you, so-called away, dedicate yourself to spread Sahaja Yoga and to ascend. Ascend in a way that constructs the whole universe. Construction. The construction power has to start from. It's a chakra of construction which has to work out through you. Anything that I have said should be taken just as an advice to you for your betterment. Work it out. Just don't, just listen to it and forget it. It's a medicine. So please listen to it again and again. Try to follow it in your own life, in your own life, not in others. Mostly other thing, oh, she's talking about somebody else. There's a little hint which Gavin wanted me to tell that if 
should not play about. So they don't do normally, but still he wanted me to tell you that the money part of it, you shouldn't try to cheat me in any way, because we have seen some bad results very recently. So you be careful on that. He wanted me to tell you that one has to be careful not to cheat me. So may God bless you all. <laughs>